Hello everyone. So today I'm going to show you a company revenue dashboard. So here is actually a dashboard here you can see. So this is showing the revenue, the projects ongoing, project completed. So 2022 so you can select the years and month. And then this is actually the revenue chart. So you kind of see like what's the progress uh, for all the for all the months here. And then based on the selections, right? For example, I can select 2023, you can see it's being updated. So this is kind of how like have a different views. You can even select all just to show all the years, right? So it kind of makes the changes. And then lastly, there's actually a month format. So if you select a month, right? It's still showing uh, the months. So it shows by day. So let me just select one that has the data. So this is like June, you can see it's showing like day three, day seven, eight, 10, 12, 17, 28. It's like, I think August, seven day as well. So you can see the revenue. So how, how is it actually working, right? So if you're familiar, so I'm using something called grid. So grid, you can imagine if you use like Excel before, like it's something like pivot table. So it helps you to connect your data directly and it creates a chart. So in our case, we're actually uh, connecting this to Notion. And then it's actually sync, uh, I would say in real, real time, like five to 10 seconds. So for example, here right now I have two computer projects and then one ongoing, right? So if I just update from here, maybe I change this to uh, done. So you should, you know, this is already done. If I change this to done, so what you should expect is that this will be updated to project completed. So it should take me like five to 10 seconds. If I just refresh it, hopefully it works now. Yeah, you can see it's updated. So you don't have to do anything from the grid side one is being set up. So that's the benefits of it. So what we're working with is two database. So this kind of more standard structure. So normally how I create project management uh, for my clients. Of course, this is a much a toned down version of it since I already need what is necessary, right? So these are the projects. And then here we have the invoice for the projects. And then this is like a status for the project itself. So this is just like a rule up to see how much uh, amount you have charged for this client. And then the bottom here, so we have an invoice uh, database. So here are all the invoice and then you kind of group it by the projects amount and then the dates. So this is the date that's where we're getting it to grid itself. So in which, if you're interested to try this uh, templates out, so I have this template in the description below. And then also for grid itself, it's actually kind of similar to Notion. So I include a template here. So basically how you can do is you just click here and then just like copy doc. So what you need to do is just to uh, set up Notion. Oh, no, I mean set up grid. So create a new account and then just copy down and it automatically just appear in your grid account. So you can kind of link it to the database itself to kind of play around with how it works. And the next step is if you're interested to learn how to do it. So I'm going to teach you now. So yeah, let's get started. So let me go to grid now. So now we are in grid interface. So for grid itself, so it works kind of similar to, um, how should I say it? like a word document. So a bit like Notion actually, like you can kind of type text here and then you can like do like a slash and then you can add on chart displays, different stuff. So like select charts, I can select columns. So if you use Notion, so I think you're quite familiar with this uh, layout. And then the only difference is that for grid itself, so you cannot actually change data here. So what you're doing is that you're reading data, you're getting data from Notion or even Excel Google sheets. There are different sources you can do. Like I think it's like data here. So you can do it like from Excel, Google Sheets, uh, Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, uh, I don't know what's this, Airtable, and then I think it's Smart Sheets. Yeah, there's a few sources you can, you can use. But for today, we're gonna use it for Notion only. So for this case, you can see this is our charts, right? And then these are the at the bottom here. So we have something called Grid Sheet. So basically, this is their versions of uh, Google Sheets or Excel. So I, if I'm not mistaken, they're actually using a versions of uh, Google Sheets to actually power this. So which is why I can use a lot of different formulas uh, already available in Google Sheets to kind of power the charts here. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna set it up and how this can be done, right? So if you want a more like a beginner series, I'm gonna link another video, which I already created previously on just how you can set it up. But for this, I'm gonna show you kind of what each of these setup means and then how you can actually kind of potentially replicate it for your own system. So here we have uh, grid sheets here. So you can see at the bottom, we have project reference, invoice reference, mapping, variable, top metrics, sheet revenue. So if you had used Excel, uh, Google Sheets before, this is basically just like a sheets, uh, worksheet. So, and then what each of these means, right? And then at the top here, you can see this is not a separate sheets. So we have invoice management S, project management S, 
if you see the Notion logo, you kind of know that this is actually the Notion database that I'm linked to. So basically how I essentially link them is that I have Notion here. So if I select Notion, right? So for the database, if I select expand, so full page, and then I select this three dot here, and you can see it, I add the connections. So it's actually connected to grid data. So in order to do this, you actually have to uh, create a grid account and then just link it to your Notion account. So you can automatically do this later. And then next we have is, uh, so once we're connected, so the idea is that we want to get all this data. Right? So you can see this, all this table here, it's actually just the data that we have for Notion. Okay, now go back to grid sheets. So here you can see project reference, invoice reference. So you might notice that it's kind of similar, like, oh, we have the payments, the amounts. So what do we need this for? So maybe I'll explain a bit for the use case first. So for all my grid project, uh, projects, all my dashboards, I always start with like copying the data from Notion and then referencing it in the different sheets. In this case, I'll normally call it like a project management, right? I'll just call it a project and then slash reference, invoice slash reference. And then basically what we have here is, if you can see here, if it's name, right? Project one, two, three, status done. So I've used this formula called choose columns. So basically what it's actually doing is that it's referencing the project uh, sheets here, right? And then when there's a name, there's a text called name, it automatically shows the uh, the remaining rows of it. So you actually don't have to type multiple times. So like if you're new to this formula, right? I think this is belief, I might be wrong, but it's, maybe it's like a function of array in uh, Google Sheets. So you can actually do this in Google Sheets as well. So what this does is that if I just change this name, right? I change, change the status, status, you can see it's changed to done, 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 because it's actually referring by name. So this is how I'll do it. You can even, even like just extend it here. If I put name, right? you can see there's nothing here because there's nothing. I put name, right? You can see it's showing up. So this is how you can do it. So in this case, I would like to do this because in Notion itself, so every time when I add on a new properties or I delete new properties, so sometimes it's a bit, I believe it's when you delete the properties, but there are some rules that are not too specific. So what would happen is that, for example, if I go to project management, right? If I add on a new properties or delete it, so this actually columns, we kind of switch around. So invoice could go to the first one and then go to the last one. So in the uh, dash dashboard or data, right? I do not want them to move around because I'll be using formulas, for example, like sum if, or like count ifs, or like just we look up, like stuff like that. Just if it moves around, right, you know that the formula actually breaks. So this is why I have this work around here in Google Sheets that, you know, every time, even if you make a new property changes, you change the row, stuff like that, it will still be the same as long as the name is aligned. So that's the one caveat is that every time you make a changes in name for properties in Notion, you have to come to grid to change it. But I would assume it's less often people change name compared to the, uh, creating a new uh, properties or new columns. So this is why I have this workaround. So in here, I can even just choose what kind of data they need, right? So here, project reference, I only need the name and status. So this is why I have this. And then invoice reference, I only need the name, the amount, and then the date. So you may notice here, there's a year, month, day. So something a bit different, like why do we have it? It's not in Notion, right? So this is another good thing about uh, Grid itself is that even though you don't have it in Notion, you can kind of create the data here for yourself. So in this case, like in Notion, if you use uh, format date before, so you can kind of change it to a year, month, uh, date, but you need to like additional properties, right? Sometimes it kind of slows down Notion. So which is why I prefer to do it in Grid itself, since it's uh, just very convenient. So in this case, it's actually not that difficult. Like, so what I've done is using the same choose column, but here I added something called year. So just in front, I added a year just to convert it into year itself. So for example, let me just show another example so that it kind of makes sense. So we have a date, right? So it's actually referencing here, date. So if I just put a year in front, right? Automatically, you just uh, change it to year. So similarly, if I can just put it as a month, automatically it become month as well. So 83844. So it's a bit different from this format here. So I'm going to explain a little bit. To be honest though, the formula, I mostly just copy paste it. So because yeah, that's a bit more complicated as well. So I'm not that interested in how to figure it out. But just on a high level, like four years, so I think you understand year. And then this one is, I just choose another like a formula just to ignore 1900. So somehow I don't know why the results come out. If, when there was, it's like a blank row, right? You come out the result. So I'm just filtering out. So that's the reason why. And then for the month, so I actually do a similar, similar more to like a format text thing. So I format it into this MMF format. 
which is this one format. So it's just easier for my filter to work later. And then this is the most straightforward one. Basically, I'm just changing it to day. So that's it. All right. So now that we have done for this, and then we go to mapping. So mapping and variables. So these are the two most not common. Like this is actually the default things that I always create for my dash uh, grid dashboard. It's more like a personal preference on best practice. We call it. So basically, I have here is year and then month and then all 2023, 2022. So this is basically just a uh, uh, use for my drop down so that. I can reference it here. So in grid itself, right, you can see if I select a uh, year and I select edit button, right? So this is where you can see this drop down selection. And then here there's like the options, right? So this is where I'm actually referring this to the mapping. So A2 to A. So all of them so that I can see the drop downs. And the same thing for money so. So this is kind of how I reference it. So the idea is that anything that's like kind of static, it won't change, at least for most of the time, where I'm putting mapping. And then here you can see I have this formula called unique. And I'm referencing the reference, uh, the invoice uh, sheets, and then D2 to D, right? So what this is, is actually D2 to D, so D2 and until the end, right? So basically, I'm referencing the year. So I'm using this formula called unique. So the idea is that only take uh, numbers that are not repeating. So if, there's, if it is repeating, right, then just ignore it. So in this case, once I type it, right, it's showing me 2023 and 2022. So why I do this is that I want to make sure that this dropdown is actually dynamic. So in case I add on a new <coughs> year, new dates, right? Maybe 2024 or 2021, for example, you automatically update in here so that we don't have to, like the users in Notion, we don't have to manually update it. So this is kind of the beauty of it uh, in this case. <coughs> so now that we have done for the mapping, we go to the variables. So variables basically, if you're in programming, it's like things that change, right? So like you can temporarily keep track of the, the variables. So in this case, this value here. So in grid as well, Whenever you select something, right, make a changes. So if I, especially for a drop down, if I click 2022, right, so it make the changes, right. But it needs to know that where is it making the changes. So in this case, it's making here. So let me just select options again, edit. You can see there's a target cell here. So basically variable B2, it means here. So every time I make a selections, right, you can see it's changing. So 2023 is updating here. It's same for month. If I change this, uh, just press one time, May, you can see it's been updated here. So why do we need all this, right? Aside from like this is a requirement for grid. So the reason why is that we need all this data to kind of help us manipulate and then like a mix and match so that we can actually create this data set here. So this is where the main, the meat of the potato, right? I don't know how you call it, but yeah, something like that. So this is where we have the top metrics and the revenue. So for top metrics, it's probably something more uh, simple, straightforward. So this is actually at this line here. So this is basically what I mean by top metrics. So we have the revenue this year. We have the project ongoing and then projects completed. Don't ask me why it's not aligned, but it is what it is. But yeah, you can change it if you want. So for revenue, what I'm doing is actually very simple. Like I'm just doing a sum if and then referencing the invoice. So if the year is equals now and then you just sum the value. So very straightforward. So B is basically, let me just show you. So B is the amount. So you want to sum if the amount. And then if the year is equals to this year, then just sum if. So it's very straightforward. And then you can see this formula here, year uh, bracket now. So basically I just want it automatically update the year. So it's always showing this year. So even next year, the formula just automatically update for next year. And then for projects ongoing, projects completed. So this is very simple as well, just count if. So count if project reference B. So B here, so the status. So count if it is, uh, what did I put again? Count if it is in progress or count if it's in done. So you automatically just calculate it. You can even change the wording here. It's basically just text, you can kind of change it. So one caveat is that anytime you make a changes in terms of the slides, uh, status in Notion, right? You have to update the text here. And then if you want to have more selections, right? Maybe project complete, project completed could be means done or completed or finished. You have multiple selections. You can just use count ifs to kind of accommodate for that. So basically that's how you can do it. So that's the more straightforward one. Now for the slightly more complicated one, hopefully it's not too complicated. So we have revenue here. So for this tab here, uh, hopefully it's not too complicated. So you make a selections of year rate. If I select 2023, you can see there's value here. And then if I select all right, so you will just select here, you'll show up here. So the idea is that, uh, let me just do this. So basically there's a slight difference between, I'm using this summit formula. 
So basically sum if invoice uh, reference B. So this is the amount. So invoice reference D equals to variables B2 minus reference D. Let me see. So this is basically the year. So the year equals to variable 2, basically this. So basically the idea is that when I select a year, right? So we kind of sum it based on the year itself. So this is what it is. So I don't think it's that complicated, uh, hopefully. And then invoice reference EE -E equals 2, what's EE? -E? Okay, EE -E is actually basically the month column. So invoice reference, so this E month. And then let me go back to revenue. And then A2 is basically the month. So January, February, March to December. So basically that's how you have it. So it will reference based on the year and then the month. And then for all year, right? So the idea is that when we select all right, so we don't need to uh, check for the year as well. So this is why this is actually more simplified, for, simplified version. We only check for the month. In this case, we only check for January itself. So this is why we have like two differences. And then results basically just depending on what you choose. If it's uh, you select, there's a year, right? Or in this case, if you're not all, I will just get the data from this column here, column B. So you can see it's equals to B2. If you're selecting all, I'll get the data from C2. So in this case, so it's just easier for me when I select this chart, right? So you can see, okay, maybe I don't want to go through that. But the idea is that for the data, right? I'll just ask the chart to re refer to this. Instead of like, oh, I need to see this or I see that, it's a bit complicated. So this just make it more streamlined. Okay, so yeah, I'm done explaining the year part. <laughs> Let me go to the month now. So if you might have noticed, like for the month, when you select specific month, right? For example, June. You can see it's actually changed to a day format here, instead of month. So that's why we have it here on the right side here. We have a day and then we have some amount. So how do we actually get this right? So it's actually using uh, something called query. So if you've not used uh, query before, I think Google Sheets have it as well. So did you have uh, Google Sheets query? There's quite a few tutorials to explain that. I think this website should be pretty good. I think I checked this yesterday, yeah. So you can kind of go through uh, this query. So basically what query means is that it kind of is like the whole data set, right? Let me just do a very, very quick demo what what query does for, query does for you. I can't really pronounce it. So query, and then slash, or not slash, open bracket. And I can select uh, maybe this one. Let me just select all the data, right? And then I can select. So what you need to do is type the syntax. So you can't really change it. Like, this is the syntax that needs to be done. If I just select A, right? What will happen is that you can see it will show column A. If I do a comma B, you can see it's showing column B. So on a very high level is that you kind of manipulate the data on what you want to show. So I think if I use VLOOKUP before, I think this was me using it before I realized this functions like this. I was using VLOOKUP, but this is just much, much better. So you can do like sum or if, like stuff like that, on just one query format. So in this case, this is what I'm using. So I probably won't go into details, like it's probably too deep like to go through it, but you probably just learn it yourself. So in this case, like based on different selections, you just query show different data or table. So in this case, you show the amount, the sum amount, and then you show the day. So the last part is that for the data. So for the charts, when you create charts, right? So you need to create a data here. So this data is actually, let me just copy this. It might look a bit complicated, but essentially what this is doing is this. So if variable B3, so B3 is actually if uh, this one, if this one is equal O, so it basically means that if you select all the months, right? So in this case, means that you want to see in the January to December format, but if you select like an individual month, so it means you want to see a day format. So that's kind of what it means. So if you select all the months, show D2 to D3, uh, D13. So basically here, so January to December, show this one, if you select all the months. If it's not, means you want to show it day format, right? Then show G2 to G. So show all of this, you know. I don't mind like until 30, 31st, like depend, uh, up, depending on the days. So yeah, just show all this. So that's kind of what the form is referring to. And that's basically it, like kind of how you can set up uh, grid itself like using this format. And then I would re recommend just download this template and just try it out and let's see whether it works for you. So yeah, thank you. If this helps you, like please like and subscribe and hope you have a nice day.